people have protested today in Kenya uh, throughout the country with the epicenter as uh, to be Nairobi County. And although these protests are not as huge as the previous uh, protest, uh, but this is because there has been slowing momentum of the protest since the president dissolved the cabinet and also withdrew the finance bill. And even the previous protests also just uh, began uh, as a small uh, pr protest, people protesting. And literally did the president know that it will have escalated to the level of people even storming parliament. So in this video, I want us to critically assess uh, the protest today to see what they mean to the Republic of Kenya, what is really motivating people to protest, and what are the likely possible implications of this protest as they are currently ongoing. So if you are new to our channel, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button so that you can continue with this kind of conversation. Remember, at the Socrata TV, we explore, discuss, and discover the hidden stories shaping our political landscape. Now, after dissolving the cabinet and withdrawing the finance bill 2024, I think the president thought that he had actually uh, satisfied the Gen Z's protesters. Little did he know that they were only but wanting to get more and more. After conceding to each and every of their demands, these Gen Z protesters were only but bringing one more demand. For example, after withdrawing the finance bill 2024, the Gen Z said now it is time to dissolve cabinet. After dissolving cabinet, the Gen Z said it is now time to follow up those cabinet secretaries who have been sacked and ensure that they are accountable of all the misdeeds they may have, have, they may have conducted uh, while in office. And that was coupled with other demands, including a resignation of the president and also reconstitution of IBC. Remember the IBC already has been constituted and the idea of reconstituting IBC to be in place is that the Gen Z's want the members of parliament who voted yes, which is uh, opposite to what uh, the Gen Z's wanted, they want these members of parliament to be recalled so that they can be able to have a by-election and elect new members of parliament. Of course, there are other demands, including even the sacking of the IG of police, that is uh, uh, the one who resigned, and even after him being sacked, or actually if he resigned, we still saw that the Gen Z's wanted him also to be accountable to that which he had done while he was in power. So what does this actually mean for our country? I think this uh, means that at the moment or at the point we are now, people have fully lost trust in the uh, governance or in the leadership of the president, that is Dr. William Samuel Ruto. And no matter what he does to them, it will be very difficult for these people to actually get satisfied. Even if today he was to work at every home and give them some money, uh, these people may come and say uh, that why didn't he give uh, them double of what he may have given them at that particular time. If today he walked to every home and gave people maybe bread, then they will ask, why didn't you also give us milk? So I think it is, has reached a point where uh, I think uh, there's nothing uh, he can do to actually satisfy the people. And as much as there are those who are not coming out to protest, whom I believe are likely to fall in these two groups, the first group is the group who are very fearful. They fear. They have seen people who have been killed, people who have been abducted, and all bad things that have been happening to the people. So this group of people is not willing to protest just because they fear or they are afraid of the consequences that may find them there. 
then you have another group of people who are aligned type, uh, from a tribal aspect or from a tribal perspective with the president and that is majorly the people of Kalenjin who are not getting involved in the protest because of that of course you have also side the side of Mount Kenya whereby Rigathi Gachagua had threatened by some people saying no we have to live with the president we are the ones who voted him so there is no need of complaining we have to stay with him as he is so you can see uh, that there is this two groups of people but those who are coming out are mostly those who one are courageous enough to just speak up their mind and then we have an, another group which are also taking advantage of the situation to meet their own agendas of course when there is a crisis or a problem like this uh, some people usually take advantage of the situation to meet their different agenda we have those who uh, whose agenda is to get money there are those who see this as a now time to gain popularity for example if they had some political ambition at some point it is time to actually create their profile and be on spotlight so we have also these groups of people but that is not the point the point is this where how did we reach where we are and uh, the fact that there may be all dif different groups of people is there a, any legitimate concern which we can say uh, that these people are raising? And as I started uh, before uh, I said that the issue was, was commenced or started by the finance bill, and it has it seemed or it has seemed like they are changing goalposts. And uh, to address the problem of changing goalposts or uh, appearing like the people are changing goalposts, I think the best way or the long-term strategy or approach of dealing with this problem, which will not only affect the people who are protesting, but even the president and his lineage, is maybe to overhaul the whole system. And by overhauling the whole system, I do not know exactly which mechanism that uh, they may decide to use or he may decide to use but i think uh, as far as constitutionalism is concerned uh, the only mechanism is a general election but if there is any other mechanism that can be used to ensure that the whole system is overhauled in the sense that now people will lack they will not have anything to complain about, about. it will be very difficult there will be no motivation for one to go to the street for any reason because uh, you will even find you will be f ashamed to go and protest when already all things have changed because even as much as the president is saying that he has changed he has dissolved the cabinet he has withdrawn the finance bill these people find it difficult to trust him uh, based on history his history or his track record, how he has been uh, behaving with them. And even at a point where he may decide to speak the truth or to actually mean what he's saying at that particular time, it is still difficult for an individual to believe that indeed he actually means what he's saying. So I think that is the issue in Kenya at the moment. And there have been means used to try and suppress uh, the protest we have seen that uh, police have even killed some people we have seen that these guys who are called subaru guys abducting people and today they find it difficult to abduct one person who was very strong and we have also seen uh, even media censoring at some point and i think that is only but a short-term strategy of trying to suppress the uh, movement and it, it also in itself makes the movement even grow further because now it enrages or it angers these uh, protesters who uh, now even after seeing other people have died they become more angry and motivated to go to protest again and as i end this conversation i think it will be great if uh, of course there is a solution 
which uh, the solution is ensuring that everything is working all right in Kenya. But I think uh, perceptionally, uh, also something radical need to be done. Something very, very radical. And whether it will be in the presence of the president, that is saying that the president will be among or will be in the journey of salvaging the country, or he will be out, that is, if he decides to walk out, then I think the important thing is the country. The country is bigger than any other individual. So I think that is my view and my opinion about the ongoing protests in the Republic of Kenya. And uh, it is not something great because even uh, the economy is going down, investor confidence is going down, and uh, these protests are not doing any good, even publicity of the president. Although people are getting good publicity because they are now being viewed as people who cannot accept to be suppressed or to be frustrated or to be oppressed, which is okay, and it has actually motivated even other countries like Tan Tanzania, Uganda, and even you have Ghana, you have Nigeria. But for the president, it exposes him as an individual who is incompetent and out of touch with what the public wants or what should be done, considering the fact that you have been seeing him transversing throughout the world and advocating for good governance, especially of a body like IMF, to ensure that there is uh, enough funds and funds to be shared equally among African countries. I don't know what you think about this. Please feel free to share your opinion at the comment box so that we can continue with this kind of conversation. Remember the Socrates TV we emphasize that you need to stay curious, stay critical, and stay thoughtful. Until we meet again, bye-bye.